you ought to investigate something. Find out why they stopped building Harlem Hospital. There were people in Harlem fighting hard for a long time to get that hospital built. Had a hard time getting the white men even to start it. Then when they finally started on it, and there's nothing you need in Harlem more than a hospital, because you're sick and you just got cut, or you're just getting ready to cut someone else. And we needed that hospital. So all these people had a brain, brainstorm. They got up there and picketed and demonstrated. And the white man took away all the workers, stopped to work. And someone said earlier this afternoon, they're still being paid and the hospital is not going up. Your money, the money you pay out in taxes, is, is paying the white construction workers who are sitting at home doing nothing. This is some brainstorm that someone got off the track on. When they tried to stop the construction of the hospital in Brooklyn, couldn't stop it. Because that hospital is for white people, primarily. And you are not going to stop construction where the white man is to benefit. The only thing you're going to stop is something right here in Harlem. But what really stopped the work up there, too many of y'all was out there. And the white man is free to you. As long as the line up there was uh, Cora originally started the picketing, and there were more white picketing than, than black. Nobody was worried. Plus, they started picketing on a cool day, and our people don't come out when it's cool. It was on a Wednesday, I think, and it was cool. And then on a Thursday, everybody came out there. They weren't demonstrating, but they came out there as spectators. And when all these black people uh, as spectators began to stand there and watch, they were afraid. Because they knew that with the picketers uh, picketing, any little thing could happen. And even though you don't want to integrate, if the white man started beating some integrationist heads across the street, you couldn't stand there and watch it. Your nature wouldn't let you do it. And this is what would make you explode. He knows that. So he stopped the building of the hospital. But they have not been successful in bringing a halt to any other construction in the city of New York outside of Harlem. So if they really meant good, they could have stopped that building over there in uh, Brooklyn. That you can bring a halt to all the construction in New York City if those preachers are really for real. All they got to do is take all their congregation and take them down to Times Square. Tie it up. Now, I'm not talking Muslims aren't going to do this, but go and do something. And don't care what it costs. Don't care what the penalty or the price is. When you know you're right, you're right. And if you're not willing to go all the way, don't even start. Get on out of the line. Get on out of the battle. And that's another reason why we don't pick it with you. As Reverend said, we're not nonviolent. We have demonstrated. We pull a demonstration. But when we demonstrate, if you ever see us fall out in a demonstration, we are ready to die or we're ready to see that someone else dies. I don't mean no turn the other cheek. This is the only reason that we don't become involved in these nonviolent demonstrations. It's not fair. To walk up to a man non-violently, he got a club in his hand. You're out of your mind. So you should check and find out what started, what stopped, who is behind. And one of the leading men I saw out that day, out there that day, was a white man named Herbert Hill. Herbert Hill is the labor secretary for NAACP. Now Herbert Hill, a white man holding a top position in the NAACP, can come to Harlem and stop the building of a hospital that, for the benefit of black people. If that white liberal really has your welfare at heart, let him go downtown and stop some of these other construction sites. And until these white liberals, or white people, who call themselves liberals, can go into their own neighborhood and stop construction, don't let them come in Harlem and start telling you what to do. No, when you want, if, if they want some action, you give them some action. And you'll bring about a change in your own, in the entire direction of your program and of your struggle, and you'll get a job done. We want every black man and woman to have freedom, the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children and establish a land of our own. And this is what he says, give all of us freedom of choice. First, give every one of the 20 million black people in this country an opportunity to hear the truth. Let them be taught the truth about the white man and the truth about the black man. Let them be taught the truth about God and the truth about the devil. Let them be taught the truth about heaven and the truth about hell. And once they know the truth, then give them a chance to make a decision. But don't take this poor, dumb, deaf and blind, ignorant, brainwashed, so-called Negro and ask him what he wants. He doesn't know what he wants. And because he doesn't know what he wants, he tries to integrate with a blue-eyed wolf. Don't you know, anytime you see some sheep trying to integrate with wolves, those sheep are sick.
because sheep are out of their mind. And a sheep got more chance with a wolf than you got integrated with a white man. Why, a wolf can't be as hot on a sheep as the white man has been on you here in America. We want an immediate end to the police brutality and mob attacks against the so-called Negroes throughout the United States. Yes, a complete end to the police brutality and mob attacks that our people are confronted by every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year across the land. Brother, show me those, you got those pictures? Brother, grab that picture of Brother Ronald. Let me show you what I mean by police brutality and mob attacks. Come over here with that. Here is a man, a Korean vet. This is a black man, a Korean vet. Went to war in Korea fighting for America. Risked his life fighting for America. And came back to this country and was shot down by the white man like a dog. Not some Ku Klux Klansman down in Mississippi. This black man was shot through the heart by policemen in Los Angeles, California. And they are dumb enough to think we have forgotten it. We are Muslim, never forget. You don't kill our brother. We don't never forget. You don't shoot one of us and then grin in our face. You don't shoot one of us and then shake our hands and think we forget it. No, we never forget. We'll never forget. Someone has to pay. Somewhere, somehow, someone has to pay. When a snake bites your children, you don't go and look for the snake that has blood on his jaws. Any old snake will do. Any old snake will do. They shot him through the heart. And as he lay dying on the sidewalk, they beat that hole in his head with police clubs. Not in Mississippi, but in Los Angeles, California. Not in the South, right there in the North, in the West. Here it shows, here it shows. Men, black men, laid all over the sidewalk, shot down by police bullets. Not men who were guilty of some crime. Not men who were drunk, not men who attacked anyone, but they shot their way into our mosque, shot their way into our religious sanctuary, and got the audacity to walk around here talking about this as a country based upon uh, the principles of freedom of religion and freedom of worship and freedom of speech. This country is based upon nothing but hypocrisy, and it's based upon nothing but the right of white people to mutilate and shoot down black people. This is the brutality that we're talking about. This is the crime that we're talking about. And you say we teach hate. What kind of hate are we teaching? We're telling you what happens to black people. And this man didn't get shot down because he was a Muslim. They didn't ask him what his religion was. They saw that he was black and they began to fire point blank. And then when they went to court, these Gestapo, they were the criminals. They didn't go to court. They charged him. He's a dead man. And they charged him with a crime. But these Negroes here, shut down, were charged with a crime. And you haven't heard anybody open their mouth about it. You wonder why you're having trouble in this country. You're having trouble because the devil is on the rampage. A blue-eyed devil is on the rampage. A heartless devil is on the rampage. A beast is on the rampage. And you haven't got sense enough to know how to handle them. So, so we don't try and handle them. God is going to handle them. We ask God to give him justice. We ask God to trap him. We ask God to catch him. We ask God to deal with him, and we pray that God deals with more of them day after day. Right. And what ones God don't get, we'll get them. For eight weeks, eight weeks in Los Angeles, 15 so-called, 14 so-called Negroes set on trial, charged by the police with police with uh, assault, charged by the police with intent to commit murder. You haven't read anything about it in the paper. You haven't seen anything about it and heard anything about it from these blue-eyed white so-called liberals. They quieted it down. They hushed it up. And none of the Negro leaders opened up their mouth during the trial. They were silent. Why, they had a rally of 35,000 Negroes in uh, one of those state Wrigley Fields in Los Angeles while the all-white jury was in session. And not one of them came forth and mentioned what had happened to those 14 Negroes in that, in that city. And they wonder why things are developing to what they are today. No, you don't get justice in court. A black man can't get justice in court. A black man can't get justice in the court system of America. And I'm telling you, 
The only way you get justice is in the street. The only way you get justice is in the sidewalk. The only way you get justice is when you meet justice for yourself. You never will get justice in the white man's court. No, not me. I never want him to take me to court. I saw what he did with my brothers. I see what he has done with them right here in New York City. So make sure you obey the law. Make sure you never commit a crime. Make sure you never de deviate from the law. But any time one of them puts his hands on you, take him off the planet. Take him off the planet.
you can forget it. Then the test, oh, then what about the resurrection? He says that our people are dead. Negroes are dead. Walking zombies. You're the one that the book is talking about who is dead. Dead to the knowledge of yourself. Dead to the knowledge of your own people. Dead to the knowledge of your own God. Dead to the knowledge of the devil. Why, you don't even know who the devil is. You think the devil is someone down inside the ground that's going to burn you after you're dead. Why, the devil is right here on top of this earth. He got blue eyes, blonde hair, white skin, and he's giving you hell every day, and you're still too dead to see it. We believe in the resurrection of the dead. We believe that the 20 million black people in America in the last days will be taught the truth. The trumpet of truth will sound in your ear. As it's being sounded today, the trumpet of truth. And this truth strikes your ear and strikes your heart. It'll open your eyes. It'll open your ears. It'll make you stand up. It'll do the same thing for you that truth did for the dry bones in the valley. Because the picture of dry bones in the valley is talking about you. The picture of Lazarus laying dead four days is talking about you. You are Lazarus. You are the dry bones. You are the prodigal son. You are the lost sheep. You are the people about whom the Bible is speaking who will stand up in the last day when the trumpet is sounded. Black people are waking up. Black people are standing up. Black people are rising up and they're throwing fight into that knee-shaking white man. We believe we are the people of God's choice. That's what we believe. We believe we're the chosen people. We don't believe Jews are the chosen people. We don't believe Jews are the ones going to the promised land. We don't think Jews are a part of God. No, Jews are nothing but another part of that same race of devils that come out of Europe. They didn't even come out of the Holy Land. They come out of the caves of Europe. A Jew, a Frenchman, an Irishman, a Jew, all of them the same thing. A race of devils. They got different kinds. Germans, Irish, all of them the same thing. Just like you got a German Shepherd, an uh, Irish Setter, a French Poodle, a Chihuahua, but they all dogs. We furthermore, we believe we are the people of God's choice. As it is written that God would choose the rejected and despised, and we can find no other person fitting this description in these last days more than the so-called Negroes in America. We believe in the resurrection of the righteous. We believe in the judgment. We believe this first judgment will take place as God revealed right here in America. Right. The judgment will take place in America. The resurrection will take place in America. The, the uh, uh, judgment will take place in America. The separation will take place in America. And the destruction will take place in America. Okay. Doom will take place in America. Doomsday will take place right here. This is the place the Bible is talking about. When the Bible mentions Babylon, it means America. When the Bible means, it mentions Sodom and Gomorrah, that's America. When the Bible mentions Egypt, that's America. This is Rome. This is Babylon. This is that wicked kingdom that God is going to come and set flame to in the last day. And you're living in that day right now. And I'm glad. We believe this is the time in history for the separation of the so-called Negroes and the so-called white Americans. We believe the black man should be free in name as well as in fact. By this we mean that we should be freed from the names imposed upon us by our former slave master. Murphy is not your name. Jackson is not your name. Smith is not your name. Bunch is not your name. Powell is not your name. That's the white man's name. Those names go with blue-eyed people. Those names go with blonde-haired people. Those names are not for black people. Your names come from the East. You came from the East. You should have some good names, some holy names, some names that don't connect you with the white man, but names that connect you with God. Not names that connect you with the devil, but names that connect you with God. Like Hassan, Shari, Rahman, Rahim, Hussan. Lumumba, Kenyatta, and Kruma, Nieri. Good name. Those names give you honor. When you walk around here saying your name is Murphy and Johnson and Jackson and that kind of crap, why you don't do nothing but honor the white man. You let the world know who owns your grandfather. When you say it's Smith, that means some old white man named Smith on your grandfather. And that's where you got your name. Names which identified him as being the slave master's slave. We believe that if we are free indeed, we should go in our own people's names, the black people of the earth. We believe in justice for all, whether in God or not. We believe as others that we are to do equal justice as human beings. 
We believe in equality as a nation of equals. We do not believe that we are equal with our slave masters in the status of free slaves. What that means? You and I can't walk around here saying we're equal to the white man. White man got all the factories, got all the stores, all the businesses, all the schools, and you're going to tell us we're equal with them? No, we're not equal until we make ourselves equal. We're not equal until we have what he has, until we have for ourselves what he has for himself. When he runs up his flag, we need a flag that we can run. When he breaks out his army, we need our army. He come up with his navy, we need our navy. He have his air force, we need our air force. He have his bullets, we need our bullets. Then when we got the same thing that he has, we're equal. But as long as we're begging him for what he has, we're not equal to him. We recognize and respect American citizens as independent people, and we respect their laws which govern the nation. And if it's true, we don't love any white man, but we respect his law, we obey his law, you won't find us pretending to love them. They're not worthy of our love, but we respect their law. We respect their flag. We respect their government. We don't believe in it, but we respect it. We respect authority. We respect those who have positions of authority. But that doesn't mean we have to love those people or like those people or trust those people. They are not worthy of our trust, and they are not worthy of our love, and they won't get our love. The offer of integration is hypocritical and is made by those who are trying to deceive the black people into believing that their 400-year-old open enemy of freedom, justice, and equality all of a sudden are their friends. Furthermore, <coughs> we believe that such deception is intended to prevent black people from realizing that the time in history has arrived for the separation from the white people of this nation. If the white people are truthful about their professed friendship, toward the so-called Negro, they can prove it by dividing up America with their slaves. We do not believe that America will ever be able to furnish enough jobs for her own millions of unemployed white people in addition to jobs for the 20 million black people. A white man, he wants you to remain a boy. He wants you to remain a lackey. He wants you to remain dependent on him. He wants you to come looking to him for some kind of advice or some kind of teacher. No, you teach yourself and stand up for yourself and respect yourself and know yourself and defend yourself and be yourself and you'll be recognized as an intelligent person. I purposely say the government. That's who it is. FBI, CIA. They sneak around here in Harlem trying to frighten you into thinking that if you be a Muslim, you're going to catch hell. You already caught hell. You can't catch any more hell than you have caught. No, anytime you live in a government where its Federal Bureau of Investigation will spend its time running around here trying to frighten Negroes into thinking that they will be chastised for becoming Muslim, for accepting the religion of Islam, that government has fallen to a low level. Anytime, and the FBI does it. The FBI walks around here asking questions, trying to frighten somebody. They ought to be told this is a new day. Nobody afraid of any FBI. <laughs> Why should they bother us? We obey the law. We respect the law. We teach our people to obey the law. They should think us. They should try and get you to become a Muslim. But they don't want you to be a law-abiding person. They don't want you to be a respecter of the law. They want you to be a criminal. They want you to be a lawbreaker. They want you to be immoral so they'll have an alibi to come in and bust your head with their club. No, this is what the FBI does. And God's going to chastise them for using their power in the wrong way. No, that's, that's what they do with their offices down there in the Department of Injustice, calling themselves, or rather in the Department of Justice, calling themselves their uh, uh, respecter or protector of someone's rights. This is not fair for them to do this. They know what I'm saying is true. It's what they do. They come knocking on our doors trying to frighten our little children. Are you a Muslim? What you look like asking our little children, is that child a Muslim? I tell the old devil, you must believe it or you wouldn't be wasting all your money trying to track us down. <laughs> One of those old 
old blue eyed thing had the nerve to uh, a couple of years ago to go to Philadelphia and tell the Muslims that their brother Malcolm is talking about white people and he's in New York living with a white woman. Imagine that. I told the brothers, next time the old FBI come and tell you that, you tell them that if I'm in New York living with a white woman, it's his mother. His blue-eyed mother. And since she's living with me, as he says, I can tell him what his mother is like, what she does. How nasty she is. How dog-like she is. Yes, you tell them that. in this form of harassment. They engage in such harassment because the American government wants to turn you against your own kind in order to keep you from making a mass exodus out of this country back to your own country where you can live among your own kind. So the American propaganda is designed to make you think that no matter how much hell you catch here, you are still better off here in America than you would be elsewhere. This is their trick. They want you to think you have no place else to go. And many of our so-called Negro intellectuals who pose as our leaders and our spokesmen actually believe that our people have no place else to go. And so this type of leader can only offer a solution designed to make us stay here and continue to catch hell patiently in the hope that someday the white man will have a change of heart and recognize us too as human beings and then accept us into his white society. You never will have peace here. You never will have security here. You never will have hospitality from white people here. You'll spend another thousand years exposed to the hypocrisy and false promises of the white man. This isn't hate. If you pick up the paper tomorrow and they repeat anything that was said, watch how they say it. Let me show you how tricky he is. Number one, he'll tell you about 200 people was out here today. Now what do you say? They can be 10,000. He'll say 200. Because he don't even want you to think that anybody will listen. They took a, a census in Newsweek magazine, white man, and by the way, the old white man who owned the magazine blew his dreams out last week. Yeah, he did. <laughs> blew his brains out. He owned the Washington Post and the Newsweek magazine, and he was, I think he was Mr. Mr. Kennedy's best friend. One of his advice. He, in, a, in, a, in a moment of happiness, he blew out his brain. I, I love to see them get that happen. The, uh, the Newsweek magazine printed this poll in which they said that most Negroes, when asked, had never heard of Muslims. What I mean, this is, this is what they said. Now, show you how naive the white man is. In Kenya, when our brother Jomo Kenyatta and our beautiful And our beautiful brothers, the Mau Mau, who were patriotic soldiers fighting in defense of Kenya, their homeland, when the white man would go to them with his pole and say, you belong to the Mau Mau? They said, I ain't never heard of the Mau Mau. 
You know, the white man is so naive. He actually expects that African to tell him that he was one. <laughs> and the one who so faithfully told Boss, I never heard of him, Boss. He got Boss's head when Boss went to bed. <laughs>
planet the warmonger, the war maker, the troublemaker. So today, we believe religiously that God is after the white man, that God is rounding them up, that God is bringing them together, dumping them all in one spot for the sole purpose of casting all of them into the lake of fire. We religiously believe that when you read the book of Revelation, and it points out in there about the beast in the last days that was cast into the lake of fire as Muslims, we believe that this means none other than the American white man. We believe that his future is a fiery future, a future in which he will be enveloped in the flames that will stem from God's wrath. And because we believe this religiously, we respect him, but we don't have any desire to be integrated with him. We want to be separated from him. We want to please God. We want to get on God's side so God will be on our side. We want to make ourselves acceptable to God. We don't want to make ourselves acceptable to the white man. We're not trying to impress the white man. We shake his hand, we show him respect, but we're not trying to make no love with the white man. Let him love his own kind and let us love our own kind. Let him unite his own kind and let us unite our own kind. Let, us li let him live in his neighborhood and let us live in our neighborhood. Let him run his community and let us run our community. If the white men cops are going to be in the white community, let us have some black ones. Let us have some black precincts. Let us have some black merchants. Let us have some black stores. Let us have something black in a black community. We are tired of looking into the face of these blue-eyed exploiters who are taking advantage of our people. I've enjoyed you. Brothers and sisters, I want in the name of Allah, the all-wise, true and living God, the one to whom all praise is due, we thank him together in unity and harmony. As you know, the white man is always looking for you to cut up, start something that he can blame on us. So as you disperse from this meeting this afternoon, we want you to be cool, calm, collected. Don't let anyone hurt you or provoke you into becoming involved in any kind of trouble. On the other hand, we still don't teach you to turn the other cheek. We don't in any way at any time teach you to turn the other cheek. 